Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Today we're going to be bringing you the Halloween special over in the DC Universe. It takes place in the Justice League Dark and it is called The Witching Hour. When we last left off, we discovered that Wonder Woman had a new power, something magical within her, something that you discovered underneath her headband. And in The Witching Hour, we are now discovering what that means and what it means for her. This is a story of supernatural, of darkness, of evil magics. And what will happen? Well, stick around and find out. For the Amazons of Themyscira, they would often feel something pulling on their hearts as the moonlit shadows grew each night. It was something that they could not explain, like some cosmic thing that was warning them that there is something to fear in the dark. Many years ago, the young Diana felt just that, but instead of pulling the covers over her face, she went out. What she found was something so horrible that she couldn't comprehend it. She wanted to scream, but no sounds left her lips, only a hoarse, rasping voice. She wished that she could unsee what was just seen, but it was too late. The witching hour was upon us. As the mangled bodies of the witches of Hecate chased her, they pinned her down so that the witch goddess herself could do what she wanted, and Diana could feel the arcane energy of the branding iron getting close to her, and she screamed as it was pushed down on her forehead. When it was all done, she ran to her mother's bedside to tell her everything that she could remember, and the queen wasted no time bringing her tormentors to the palace. The witches said that it is true that they serve Hecate, the triple goddess of witchcraft, and each month they walk to the old crossroads in the forest to perform their rights to their patron. There are secrets in those rights, but no menace. In all of their years, they've never witnessed such horrors like the ones that the princess speaks of. They hope that their patron hears their prayers, but she has always been with them in spirit, not body. When they found the young princess asleep in a tree above their ceremony, they thought it best to return her to her bed without waking her. As Diana reached womanhood, they would be glad to teach her anything she wishes to know of their ways. They only need to call upon them. Hippolyta looks at her daughter and asks if that satisfies her, and Diana laughs, stating it does. She's terribly sorry for the trouble that she has caused them. From that night on, she would sleep soundly, but once Diana was taken away, Hippolyta shouted and demanded, asking what have they done with her daughter. The witches tell her that they would never, but Hippolyta shouts that she heard their bedtime story, and she appreciates them comforting Diana. But she will not ask again. Their queen commands them to speak. In unison, the three witches become calm and the triple goddess Hecate herself appears. She whispers quietly, you will forget all of this, into Hippolyta's ear, and the three witches quickly fall to their knees, bowing, stating that she has come. They called for her under many moons and feared their offerings were not enough to please her. Her eyes glow purple, and she smiles, telling them they were not. The witches begin to feel something inside of them, and as their bodies turn to sand, she tells them that her time draws closer, and soon she will call upon her true children, her witch mart. At long last, the world will feel her fury. As lightning strikes over the Hall of Justice, in the current day, Diana tells the League that magic as they know it has been destroyed, and the foe that they faced, well... Show them, Zatanna. Zatanna places her hands on the table, stating that it isn't safe for her to use the usual brand of magic. So forgive her that her ruin work is a little bit rusty. As she begins to draw her ruin, a bright light shines from it as the projection of the Upside Down Man appears. And Diana says that the Upside Down Man is the tip of the spear, a singular being in a race of cosmic horrors known as the Other Kind. He was able to destroy Swamp Thing with a mere gesture. He turned Detective Chimp into a puddle of flesh, and he effortlessly ripped the demon blood out of John Constantine's body. They managed to save their friends and drive the creature back, but the other kind's powers seemed to be unlimited. Batman then asks, What about the magical heavy hitters? We should call Jason Blood and... Satana stops him, stating that Jason Blood and the others of the magical community have swore off helping the Justice League. They wish to solve this problem themselves. Superman then asks, What of Dr. Fate? Why isn't he helping your cause? And Diana explains that Dr. Fate is the one who guided the creatures here. Kent Nelson is trapped within the helmet. And Naboo is tired of the chaos caused by magic. And he seeks to end it. Dr. Fate is the other threat that they wanted to speak of. Mainly because he tried to feed them to the Upside Down Man. Superman pauses for a moment and asks, You managed to fight this creature back? And Diana tells him yes. So then he stares at Diana asking, How? She thinks back to the power that she unleashed. And she says that they were just lucky. They can't rely on that happening again. She'll work with her team to develop the next steps and report back. Martian Manhunter tells her that they have their thanks. If they could, 
They would like Zatanna to stay for a moment. As Diana gets ready to set foot in the door, she looks back and Zatanna tells them, Sure. Once she leaves, Zatanna tells Batman that she really wishes they hadn't done that. Diana still hasn't forgiven her for siding with the magical community at the beginning of all of this. And Batman says that he has seen Diana stare down gods and battle horrors. He's never seen her like this before. Something about this threat is under her skin. We've known each other for a long time, and I know that there's something that you're not telling me. But I need to know, are you up for this? Zatanna tells him that she hopes so. She really, really hopes so. And as she leaves, Batman looks back at everyone and says, Okay, who else is concerned? As Zatanna catches up to Diana, she asks when exactly did she decide to not tell them about the unknown, the unspeakable, the powerful source of magic trapped within her head. Diana looks at her own reflection in a mirror. And she says that until they understand what the mark is, she's not going to concern the lead. She also doesn't want them to rely on something inside of her that she cannot control. This mark, she can recall an echo of a nightmare from when she was a child. But how is that possible? As the two leave, Hecate's face appears in the mirror and she turns towards the doorway leading to the Justice League meeting room. Inside, Flash says, Okay, I for one am scared out of my mind. I'm not going to get sleep for like a week. And Hot Girl says that she can't think of a single lifetime that she has ever liked magic. It's always the end of the world and horrible monsters. But just then Hecate appears and she whispers into everyone's ears, you will forget all of this. As she fades, Martian Manhunter says, yes, where were we? Ted Cord has registered another complaint. Meanwhile, over at the Oblivion Bar, the witches of the Sisterhood of the Sleight of Hand gather around for a night of fun and laughter. The girls meet up every so often to encourage one another. Even the ones who know only the minor crafts. But tonight, the air is thick with power, and even Constantine, who knows why he's here, feels it. Then Rebecca Carstairs, the one known as Witchfire, walks in. Once everyone has their drinks in their hand, Tracy13 calls out to everyone. Alright, I call this meeting of the Midnight Society to order. For those who know me, and those who don't, my name is Tracy13. And in these troubled times, I am your sister. We're going to have an invocation tonight, and to find protection against the threat looming over magic kind. So please take each other's hands. Just then, Witchfire feels something, and she sees something from her childhood. A brand. She drops her glass and her skin turns white and Hecate's brand appears on her forehead and she tells everyone to run. Please run. Through her body, Hecate speaks, telling them that they invoke her name and her power. Yet they waste it on idle fantasy. They have forgotten the triple goddess that they serve. The world of magic will has failed me and I will burn it out and create something new in its place. I have no use for you. Witchfire's body ignites, spreading fire throughout the entire Oblivion Bar. Some witches manage to escape, but others are not so fortunate. But meanwhile, down on the Hall of Justice, Diana gathers her team, stating that they need to find answers and a fast. Take the opportunity that they have before the other can break through and... But just then, a voice calls out to Diana, whispering to her, Remember. Diana struggles, stating no, and then images of her childhood flash before her eyes, and the brand begins to shine. Just as before, white hair and white skin, Diana says that she can feel her. Zatanna runs over, telling her to just remain calm. She has powered through this before. She can do it again. Hecate then appears above everyone and tells Zatanna that no, she cannot. Detective Chimp points up, asking, Anyone else see that there? Or is my drink much stronger than it tasted? Hecate stares at Zatanna, asking, Do you know who I am? And Zatanna kneels down, stating, yes, she is Hecate, the goddess of magic. Her father taught her to pay homage to her. Hecate says, I rather liked your father, but he was short-sighted. All of your kind is. Bobo runs over to the computer to try and contact the League, but Hecate pulls him back, stating, No one will hear you now. The mundane world will be blind to my magic until my work is done. Bobo calls out to Zatanna to hurry up and get them out of here, and Zatanna tells him that her magic is dangerous. If she speaks, she could free the other kind. So Bobo shouts, How come one magic person on our team can't do freaking magic? All right, all right, okay, thinking. Swampy, get us in the closet now. Swamp Thing uses his husks to slow down Hecate, and he grabs everyone and he runs over to the closet door. Hecate tells Diana that she is witch marked. Her power is lane safe, hidden within her since childhood, and she needs it back. Everyone crashes through the closet door, with Zatanna asking, You put a door in your bar to the Hall of Justice? Bobo tips his hat, stating, It seemed like a good idea at the time, and clearly it was! Destroy the door! Swamp Thing crushes it with his vines, and Kirk Langston sighs, stating, I could go for a beer right now. He opens up the cellar door, and he looks out, stating, Oh, no, no, no. The charred bodies of the Sisterhood of the Slight Hand Witches lay scattered, with Constantine sitting in the bar. Satana asks if it's him, and he looks back, getting up, and kisses her. She pulls herself back, asking, Why did you do that? And Constantine tells her, Isn't it obvious, love? 
Look around. This is my last chance. The witching hour has begun, and we're all about to die. Later, out on the waters, Bobo tells everyone, We're all coming up to the island. Brace yourselves. There's no telling how weird things are going to get. Says the talking chimp driving a boat full of monsters. Swamp Thing looks down at the knocked out unicorn asking, Do we really need to offer this to her? What is she going to do to the poor thing? Kirk tells him, I'm pretty sure none of us want to know the answer to that one. And Diana sits in the front of the boat as they approach Athea, watching as they get closer. Satana tells everyone that they need to be careful with how they go about this. There's no telling what you know who is going to throw at them. Hell, there's a good chance that she already knows and she's waiting to spring a trap. Zatanna heads to the front telling the same thing to Diana, but Diana jumps over the edge, swimming to the shore, stating the time for waiting has passed. No matter what horrors lie on this island, they must face them if they are to have any hope. Zatanna calls out for her to wait. Don't say it, don't say her! But without listening, Diana says it. Cersei. The clouds in the sky begin to swirl and there's a loud crack of foom as lightning strikes down. And suddenly everyone begins to change into animals, including Bobo. Cersei appears shouting, You dare! You dare face me in my place of power! With a single gesture, I could have my companions feasting on your fetid meat on the jagged rock face. I welcome whatever madness drove you to my domain. Have you anything to say for yourself, idiot child? Diana raises up her tiara showing the witchmark brand. And she says, Cersei, we need help. Cersei looks at it and says, no, the witchmark of Hecate, you've been marked. She quickly reverts her spells and changes to normal clothes, stating, you'll have to forgive me for the theatrics. I'm a few thousand years old and I do enjoy playing with the heroes quite a bit. Silly outfits, the punching it, it all keeps things from getting tedious. But this is no time for such things. The witching hour has begun. She hugs Diana and says that she is so, so sorry. It's going to get much worse from here. Over in New Mexico, though, Hecate's call reaches another child, Manitou Dawn. Hecate told her where she needed to go, and without saying a word, Manitou leaped into the air. Back on the island, Cersei welcomes everyone into her home, and Bobo looks at the glass, with Cersei telling him that that wine is from California. She did not touch it. However, she can't get over the fact that they brought her an actual unicorn. What on earth is she going to do with an actual unicorn? She realized that's what she makes her billionaire clients do to prove that they're worth her time, right? Diana folds her arms, stating that this is all far from the point. We appreciate your hospitality, but we've come seeking information. This is not a time for a drink or reverie. We need to understand what we are facing. We need to know what this mark on my forehead is and what Hecate hopes to accomplish. Hecate is her patron. Cersei tells her patron isn't the word that she would use. The relationship has always been far darker than that. Allow her to try and explain. Before the gods first walked the earth, before all of the pantheons of the cultures of the world, there was Hecate. She was the primal woman incarnate, maidenhood to motherhood, to crone, birth, creation, death, all of it. Her symbol was the full moon, the symbol of mankind's great collective unconsciousness. She represented nature itself and the potential of nature. They would come to call her the triple goddess of magic, the witch mother. In the early days of man, when she still consorted with an open heart and mind, they were the first magicians attempting to steal the unlimited power within her. To protect her countless power from the growing darkness, she broke it into five pieces and hid it within five young women until the hour came that she could take that power back. As those women lived and died, she would rehouse it, never taking the power back into herself. And since the early days of man, there have always been five of the witch marked. Few have ever understood the power hidden within themselves, and fewer still have ever wielded that power. The power itself is corrosive. It's too much for the human soul to bear. Should they activate it, she would be capable of controlling her witch marked like puppets. Understand this, as each of her witch marks activate, she will grow more powerful. For centuries, she hated what magic has become on this world. And from what you have told me about the other kind and the upside down man, she fears that that time has come. She will burn out the hearts of magic and replace them with her own power. If she succeeds, she will control all of magic like she can control her witch mart and prevent the other kind from ever crossing over. Understand this too. Hecate may have once represented something light in the world, but she has become a twisted force of hate. With all of the power that I wield, I am nothing in the face of what Hecate is capable of. There is no power in the world that could stop her. Diana asks, what about if her own power was used against her? When the Upside Down Man activated her mark, she had some control over it. Perhaps her magic could do the same. Cersei thinks about it and says that that is a very interesting question. It could work. Zatanna slams her hands on the table shouting, how could you even consider this? Batman was right, maybe you aren't up for this. Diana stands up yelling that that is enough. There is a power inside of her capable of ripping this world apart and their enemies wish to use her for that. If there is any way that she can control it, then by the fate she will do it. 
Diana turns to Cersei and asks, could you activate the mark in such a way that it would shield me from Hecate's control? There must be something that can be done. Cersei tells her, yeah, she can whip up something as Zatanna yells for Diana to just stop and listen to yourself. Diana waves her off, stating that she is done listening, and Cersei begins to cast her magic, telling Diana that this is going to sting just a bit. But before the spell could go off, Deadman phases through the ceiling, shouting, Finally! There you idiots are! By the way, do you know that there's a really nervous unicorn running around upstairs? Constantine looks at Deadman, asking, What's wrong? And Deadman explains, The Ramakushna has sent me to get help. Heard that there's a new Justice League Dark or something. Right now, Nanda Parbat is burning down, and if we don't stop Manitao Dawn, she'll tear it down. Manitao is wielding a power that I've never seen before. Everything that we throw at it just bounces off. This is some kind of magic hooey that makes me feel like I'm still some hick carny out of my depth. Boba says, well, unfortunately, we're all getting pretty used to that feeling about this point. Dead man then goes on telling him, yeah, well, I'm all ears. Something has to be done. Diana calls out to him, stating, don't worry, there is. And she steps forward with her witch mark activated, and Cersei smiling. Diana then turns away from the others and with a flick of her wrist, a hole into reality opens up, taking them all from one end of the world to the other. This is what terrified Zatanna the most. So much power wielded without a thought, and every magician knows that with all great magic comes a great cost. Everyone begins to step through the portal, but Zatanna, she walks in with caution. Seconds later, the others find themselves standing at the foot of Nanda Parbat, just in time to watch it burn, and at the very top, Manitao is reaching into the ancient stone walkways, ripping them apart, laying ways to everything in sight. The dead men, Nanda Parbat's last line of defense, have separated from their hosts, and they are piled into Manitao to try and stop her, but with a simple get out, all of the dead men are expelled. As Manitao finishes, she looks back at the temple, and Ramakushna looks at Hecate and asks, Why do you seek destruction? I have guarded the boundary of life and death for generations. I have never meddled in your affairs. Hecate rises up stating, yes, and you've done a poor work of it. Humankind sits at the precipice of destruction and magic, and it has become a liability. I will burn it all and replace it with something better. Hecate then points to Ramakushna, telling Manitou to show her their power. Manitou then gathers her strength and releases a powerful blast of energy aimed right at Ramakushna. At the last second, a pair of stone arms go up, protecting Ramakushna, and as they crumble away, Diana walks through, calling out to Hecate. Hecate sees her and tells her, You dare and try to use my power against me. Diana calls out to her, I did not call for this gift. However, I will use whatever weapon the gods have willed upon me. As the two get ready for their battle, Deadman flies up telling Ramakushna that they have to get her out of here, and she asks what of their home. Deadman says, this place is just brick and mortar. The rest is a metaphor. We can get that crap anywhere. Ramakushna tells him that she's not sure, and Deadman says, you gave me a second chance. Now allow me to help you. I've been at this game for a long time. All we need is a corporeal form, and we can get you out of here. Ramakushna looks at the monk host for her dead men, stating, These will do for now. As Zatanna and the others help the monks up, Constantine asks, How much you want to bet the entire structural integrity of this place is about to fall? Swamp Thing jumps over the ledge as his vines spread out, and he says, I can bind it for now. Just allow me a moment. Dead man then tells Zatanna that they need to figure out a way to get out of here, and Bobo says, I, uh, I might be able to help with that if I remember how to use this damn sword. Ramakushna says that that is the Sword of Night, and he is the Night Master. And Bobo tells her, yeah, sure, something like that, and he swings the sword. A portal begins to open up, and Zatanna tells everyone to hurry up and get through it. Diana will kill us if any of us get incinerated by her crossfire. As everyone begins to pass through, Dead Man says that he really hopes to hell that she knows what she's doing. And Zatanna tells him, yeah, me too. Dead man then says that just to be clear, I'm saying that just because it's damn clear that she has no freaking idea what she's doing with that power. And Zatanna tells him, point taken, now go. Back in the center of the city, Diana flies around, fighting back both Hecate and Manitou. But Hecate calls out to Swamp Thing asking, can you feel it yet? Other things are happening. Swamp Thing pauses for a moment and then shouts, no, you can't do this. Elsewhere, before the Parliament of the Trees, Black Orchid stands before them, having her witch mark activated. Diana yells to Hecate, asking, What have you done? And Hecate tells her, I carried a piece of your soul, you and your sisters, and we've created a brave new world. 
Diana charges in asking, where have you sent the others? And as she attacks, Hecate shouts in pain. She holds out her hand, stating that she has had enough of these games. She will not wield her power against her. You are witched, Martin. You will obey. Hecate hits Diana with a blast from her eye, sending Diana bouncing across the stone floor. As Zatanna rushes over, shouting to Diana, asking if she's okay, Hecate tells her, Diana is more than okay. She is what she is meant to be. Constantine sighs, oh, bloody hell. And Diana stands back up with Hecate telling her, kill them. And Diana says, yes, witch mother. But truth be told, Diana blinks her eyes, waking up in a pretty crazy place, void of all color. She gasps as she is lifting herself out of the puddles that she is laying in, and a voice tells her that they were wondering when she would get up. Diana asks who, and the woman flicks her lighter, and she says that, She's no one, really, at least not anymore. As Witchfire lights her cigarette, Diana asks how. They were told that she died with the Sisterhood of the Slight Hand, and Witchfire tells her. That's a much nicer way to say you burned all those nice girls. Diana gets up stating that she was fighting Manitou at Nanda Parbat, and then there was Black Orchid. What's going on? Witchfire says that this is where Hecate keeps them. The parts of their minds that she doesn't want getting away. Those two, though, they're still grounded, still caught up there in all the action. Diana then asks, what is this place? And Witchfire points up, stating that she should recognize the view. Diana turns and looks up and sees the earth and says, Great Hera. And Witchfire laughs, telling her that she wouldn't recommend invoking a goddess of the Greek pantheon here. This one isn't the real moon, not the literal ball of rock that you and your friends in the Justice League blew up. Think of this place as a metaphor representing the moon. Diana yells at their must be a way out of this place in which fire shrugs stating that i'm dead i'm not going anywhere and neither are you them mortals don't really stand any chance but perhaps a demigod could cause some problems which is why we're here in the collective unconsciousness just then diana falls to her knees asking why does she suddenly feel so weak and Witchfire says that it's probably her body doing whatever Hecate is needing it to do. And back in the real world, Diana is continuing her rampage with Constantine lighting up asking, Can you feel it? The rules of magic are being changed right beneath our feet. Hecate is rewriting them in her own language, and Diana is little more than just a pen. There's a pub around the corner where I grew up. Always imagine that that's where I would go if any real apocalypse hit. Get a little drunk while the world falls apart. Zatanna smacks the back of Constantine's head, telling him, Just shut up! I have enough to worry about without your self-loathing crap. You're John freaking Constantine! You've given the finger to the devil himself. Stop acting like you can't do this. I just need the clever jackass that I know you are. Constantine begins to cough, and as he pulls the handkerchief away, there's a small amount of blood, and Constantine says, Ah, uh, there's something we need to talk about, love. I went to the doctor the other day, and it wasn't looking good. Not sure if it was the demon blood keeping me stitched up, or maybe the upside down man left me a little surprise. But this is not the kind of cancer you can do much to fight. Why do you think I was here in the bar when it burned inside out? Everything that made me halfway useful was tied to that blood. You want John freaking Constantine? Well, he's not here. Just another back alley exorcist with a bloody cough. Zatanna smiles, stating, Actually, it's funny you mention that. I have a friend who could use an exorcism right about now. Constantine laughs. <laughs> Bugger me, you're right. It has no chance of working, but it's better than a pint in a song. Meanwhile, over at the Oblivion Bar, everyone stumbles out of the portal. And Ramakushna shouts that she can feel it. The green, it is screaming. Kirk looks at Bobo and asks, Maybe we shouldn't have come here. What is this place that you mentioned? Myra? And Bobo says, Yeah, it's not a good idea. These folks aren't big fans of me. Don't think that they would like me bringing a magical war to their doorstep. Anyway, since this whole thing is terrifying and all, who else needs a drink? And just then a voice shouts, There will be no revelry. The Witch Mother has commanded your lives to end and Manitou Dawn will obey. Manitou follows everyone through the portal and as she crosses a black shadow reaches out grabbing her. She struggles asking what are these shadows and a voice from the shadows tell her that they are from the shadow dimension, a hellscape devoid of light. It also happens to be the place where the most powerful of them can escape when she massacred their friends. Tracy 13 shouts that this is the sisterhood of the slight hand and she really hopes this hurts. Back in Nanda Parbat, Satana runs up to Diana, calling out to her, telling her, Please, listen! I know they're still good inside of you. Diana turns back and stares, and Zatanna tells her that she knows that she's scared, that she's being forced to do all of this, but Wonder Woman, the Wonder Woman beneath the witch mark is stronger. Through Diana, Hecate speaks and tells her, Zatanna, you are nothing more than a cheap stage magician and fool. Diana cannot hear you through the tempest of my power. You do not deserve to live. Zatanna laughs, telling her, I figured that there would be something like that that you would say. Tempest of power or not, even a cheap magician knows that sleight of hand isn't about what you're looking at. It's about what you have missed. Suddenly, Hecate's powers begin to separate from Diana, and Hecate shouts that she can't move. Constantine says, It's a nice thing about a simple spell that scales easily. Tap a binding spell into the raw energy of a dying heart of magic, and you got yourself a party. Now then, Hecate, triple goddess, moonborn, queen of magic, 
Release these women. The magic of Earth compels you! Diana begins to scream, and shortly afterwards, Black Orchid and Manitow begin to follow, and Diana says that she can feel it. The power! And back in the collective unconsciousness, Diana screams in pain there as well, with Witchfire sighing, stating those idiots. Diana rolls around screaming in pain, stating that it is excruciating. And what's more, Black Orchid and Manitow begin to scream until their bodies fade out of this place. Witchfire says they did it. They actually freed them. She hurries over to Diana, asking if she can hear her. Can she still feel the pain? And Diana groans, stating, no. It's like burning flesh. For a moment, she was back, and she was looking through her own eyes. And then they started to burn with a powerful light. And as Diana's color fades, Witchfire picks her up and says, okay, you're going to have to brace yourself for this. Your friends just tried to sever the connection between you and Hecate. But they didn't measure it right. Black Orchid and Manitou, they broke free. And then all the power raced into your body. We were talking about a universal level of magical power more than any living host has ever carried, more than any host is capable of carrying. Diana asks, what is she saying? And Witchfire says, you may have just died. But as Diana comes to the startling revelation that she may not survive this, Swamp Thing makes his way to the burning of the Parliament of Trees to stop Black Orchid. As the vines tighten around her throat, Black Orchid screams to please stop hurting her. It wasn't her, Hecate was using her. Swamp Thing yells, the green has been mortally wounded and the Parliament of Trees is gone. Black Orchid tells him she didn't want any of this. She didn't mean any of this. And the vines grip harder and Swamp Thing tells her, it doesn't matter. The green will die because of you. Just then a voice calls out to Swamp Thing, telling him no. The green will not fade, it will change and adapt to something new and worthy of this world. A beautiful new garden paradise will spring forth from these woods and remind the world of nature's might. This is the will of their mistress, Hecate. But for the parliament of flowers to grow, the old must be pruned away. Back at the Oblivion Bar, Manitow begins to wake up asking if they can hear her now. Bobo tells her, it depends. Are you going to try and kill us again? If not, then yeah, we can hear you. How is it you managed to escape Hecate's grasp? Manitow tells him that it is not she who broke free, but something broke her free. The actions of her friends at Nanda Parbat changed the game for a moment. However, it didn't happen soon enough. Magic is already changing hands, and it belongs to her now. Kirk runs over to the doorway, and as he opens it, he sees a brick wall, stating, Oh dear. Manitow goes on stating that if Black Orchid was released as well, then both their powers, two-fifths of it, will flow into the next active host. That body will bear the power until it burns out, and the power will at last return to Hecate. Back at Nanda Parbat, Zatanna and Constantine watches as Hecate's power surges through Diana, and Zatanna then asks, that didn't go our way, did it? Constantine tells her that he's going to take a guess that Diana is more powerful than any god that has ever walked the earth. She could blink us out of existence if she wanted. She calls back to Hecate, asking, What shall I do against those who stood against us? And Hecate tells her to leave them be. They will learn the new meaning of death shortly. Just then, Zatanna and Constantine feel a rumble in the ground as a giant temple shoots out of the ground, destroying the surrounding buildings. A large winged specter appears before the two of them telling them that they stand at the gates of the great necropolis, and they will be brought to the graves shortly. But in the collective unconsciousness, Witchfire looks up at the pale earth, stating that it's almost beautiful in a horrible kind of way. They have front row seats to watch the death of a magic as they know it. Diana looks at the lake where Black Orchid and Manitow were and says that if those two were severed from the witch mark, there must be something down there. You said before that this place was a metaphor, the subconscious of the magic of Hecate herself. Perhaps we could go deeper? Diana then runs, diving into the lakes, and she begins to swim it down. And she swims for hours, even days, until she hits something. She touches the glass, beating on it, hoping for an answer. And then nothingness. And then from the nothingness, a figure appears pulling her through. She climbs out, telling the woman, Thank you, but... What is this place? Who are you? And the woman tells her, You already know the answer to that. My name is Hecate, and you must listen carefully if you're going to survive. But back in the real world, the other heroes try to fight back Hecate's forces when suddenly, all three groups notice a doorway appear before them. They run through the portal, and as everyone arrives on the island of Circe, she tells them that they sure did make a mess of things, didn't they? Satana tells her how could she have, but Circe stops her, telling her, Look, we don't have much time. We don't trust each other, and you think it was foolish 
foolish to have Diana use Hecate's power. The point is we were already losing. Hecate replaced two core pillars of magic with her own power. Life and death now belong to her. Nature belongs to her. And if she knocks out a third pillar, the system will fall apart completely. Knowing her, Hecate is after the sphere of gods, a dimensional home of all spiritual and godly energy in the multiverse. If she takes hold there, the magic that holds each of us together will die. And that includes all of you. Best case scenario, we'll be rewritten with her hate twisted magic. Bobo Shell is asking, what do you want from us? Give us something and we can make a stand. There are thousands of gates to the spheres of gods. Cersei says, come on, I thought you were supposed to be a detective. Think of the mythology at play here. Where do you think? We should go. Elsewhere, Diana walks ever closer to her target. And when she can't walk, she climbs, and she climbs to the highest point at the highest summit. As she rests her feet, she begins to open up the gateway to the abandoned city of Olympus. Back in the collective unconsciousness, though, the Maiden of Hecate says that she must be brief, as there is a lot to understand. In the beginning, there was magic. It was raw, rich, burgeoning light of possibility surrounded by the still-forming multiverse. Eons later, someone called the domain the Sphere of Gods, but the story begins long before the gods. Through the dreams of the first beings, there was light. And from that incredible light, the first being shaped herself out of the cosmos. The young girl sensed that she wasn't alone in the dark, and beneath the Sphere of Gods, there was a darker other place. As she formed from that light, he from the darkness, the upside down, staring up at her. To put the horrible creatures out of her mind, she began to visit Earth to watch humanity grow. And she would give them touches of her magic to delight and astound them with the possibilities of the world around them. As humanity grew, the girl was given a name, which meant far off in primitive tongue, as they believed she lived in the moon above, and they called her Hecate. Humanity began to grow and with it beliefs followed. Pantheons were made, each having their own mysteries and power, and each pantheon tried to win over her favor, each believing that they were a subsidiary to her stories. Hecate allowed this because it amused her so. As time passed, Hecate could feel herself changing, and she felt a responsibility to the new forms of magic and belief. Thus, the aspect of the maiden gave way to the aspect of the mother. There were many offers from the pantheons to try and woo her, and ultimately she agreed to take the hand of the Greek god Hades. The gods of Olympus welcomed her as one of their own. Even the mighty Zeus recognized that her power surpassed even his own. She would be Hecate, the goddess of magic. But in her generosity, mankind noticed the immense power that she wielded and sorted it out for their own. They would mimic the incantations that they had witnessed from her followers capturing her. And every day she would pray to her fiance and her adopted pantheon to come and save her. One day Hades came to her with a simple message. He had found a new bride. The god the gods of Olympus had made a decision and she was no longer welcome at their gates. She screamed and the screams felt what she had not felt in an eternity. The dark, upside down mirror of her own great power, rolling, toxic and dangerous, full of hate. She called four magicians, giving them what they wanted, a dark magic that would rip the world apart. And she gave to them nothing but malice and hatred from her heart. The aspect of the mother was shed and replacing it was the new form, the crone, the righteous hate incarnate. Once free, she let the gods know of her fury too, reminding them of her rightful place in the cosmos. And if they dared cross her again, she would turn it against them and end them. But still only trusting herself, she broke her power into five points and hid them within five young girls in whom she saw a sliver of the maiden that she once was. The maiden and the mother tried to retake control, but ultimately the crone dominated and the triple goddess was born. Diana listed stating that she thinks she understands, but the aspects of the maiden and the mother tell her understand is not enough. Surviving what's to come will take sacrifice. Back on Cersei's island, she tells everyone to look no point in dancing around this thing. There's only one path to take and they're going to have to kill Wonder Woman. Zatanna shouts that she can't be serious and Cersei says that it's Wonder Woman or magic. If you pick Wonder Woman, we are all going to die, even Diana. She sighs, telling herself, I can't believe that I'm the one making the plea for the greater good here. And she begins to cast her magic, telling everyone that they know what they have to do. The right killing blow to Diana will set off a reaction equal to an atomic bomb in magic. This will be the end of Hecate, and there is no other option. So ask yourselves, what would Wonder Woman do? With that, everyone vanishes. Meanwhile, up in Olympus, Diana continues destroying the place of the old gods and she hears a voice calling out to Hecate, telling her that this is wrong. She looks over and Zatanna goes on stating that she should have trusted Diana more. She should have helped her. And right now, that's 
what they're going to do for Diana. For Wonder Woman, take the witch down. From inside of the collective unconsciousness, Diana watches as her friends begin to make their final stand, and she begs the aspects to tell her what to do. The maiden and the mother tell her that she must hold on to what is best in her. Hold on to her heart and do not succumb to darkness. Do not become the crone. Hecate's first act of magic divided it in a train. All of the troubles spawn from that division. All paths forward must take that into account. Diana tells everyone to stand back and Zatanna shouts to Cersei telling her that they need her in order to restore order. She said it was... Diana stops her, stating that she wasn't wrong. This feels impossible, but there's something that must be done. Please, everyone, stand down from the final fight. And as she falls to her knees, she calls out to Hecate, begging for her to listen. Hecate yells for her to continue the destruction of Olympus. Her goddess commands it. Diana tells her she knows the story. The other two-thirds told her she knows the pain that she feels and the hatred inside. There are things that need to be changed, yes, but this is not the way to do it. Release your control and use your incredible power to heal magic. Do not tear it down. Hecate shouts that she will not yield, and Diana continues to plea, asking her, Do not make me kill you. Hecate scoffs, stating, that possibility ended years ago. This is what I am now, and this is all that I will be. Diana looks back at Zatanna, telling her, I'm going to need your help. You're going to have to use your magic. Zatanna pauses for a moment and then tells her that her magic would open up a door to the other kind. It's too dangerous. They'd be trading one unstoppable force for another. And Diana says that she knows the cost of magic. She also knows what must be done. Zatanna stares at her and quietly says, Nepo F. Rude. There's an ear splitting crack a kaboom as lightning strikes and Hecate calls out asking, what have you unleashed? The jagged voice of the upside down man says, ah yes, I remember this power from so long ago. I can taste it already. Within seconds, the upside down man latches onto Hecate and he begins to devour her, slowly ripping her to pieces bit by bit. Using the last of Hecate's power, Diana opens up a portal back to Earth, focusing her power and draining the last of the witch mark. As that portal closes, the witch mark fades and the death rattle of Hecate echoes throughout all of magic itself, letting everyone know the witching hour is finally over. A few days later in the Hall of Justice, Diana sits alone, and Zatanna says that it seems the Necropolis and the Parliament of Flowers are sticking around. But they are starting to realize that their master is gone, and they will have to play by the old rules if they don't want an all-out war. Swamp Thing isn't taking it well, which is to say that he disappeared into the Martian Rose Garden a few hours ago. Bobo and Kirk are handling the debriefing with the rest of the League, and Superman's just upset that he couldn't save all of those people. As Zatanna sits, Diana tells her that she knows how he feels, and she is so, so sorry about all of this. If she had respected the raw power of magic, maybe things would have been different. The other kind are closer to the reality than they have ever thought possible. Olympus is being devoured by them as we speak, and her gods have long since left their heaven empty. Satana smiles, stating, hey, their little ragtag group just saved magic from the virtually omnipotent god. That's gotta count for something, right? And Diana says that she can feel that something still bothers her, though, and Zatanna says yes. But under her skin, really... When Hecate's power was broken, it was split into five pieces, with her, Witchfire, Menatau, and Black Orchid, that's four. Someone is unaccounted for. And that power flowed from host to host. That would mean that the final host has all of Hecate's power, whether they know it or not. The other kind might not be the only threat in the horizon. Meanwhile, over on an island, in the middle of nowhere, a cackling laughter echoes throughout the stone halls. The plan worked far better than she had ever imagined. How easy it was to guide them to her own ascension. She often dreamed of this moment over a millennia ago, but now that moment has finally arrived. The old goddess of magic is dead and the new goddess is born. Reality trembled with the might of Cersei's laughter. The fools actually believed the witching hour had drawn to a close, but the true horror has yet to be seen. <laughs> the witching hour is complete. And make sure you subscribe right here at Comic Storian to keep up the date as to what is happening with the Justice League Dark, the Justice League, and the Justice League Odyssey. And don't forget, we also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash comic storian, where we bring you a lot of extra content. Most of it is basically the Comic Storian team goofing around and bringing you podcasts. But if you want to see our opinions on the TV shows, nice and early. If you want to see our opinions on the Comics Experiment episodes, nice and early. If you want to see me and Dan just having three beers and talking about something, come on over to the Comic Story and Patreon, and I'll see you there. <laughs> that laugh was weird.